As a doctor of oriental medicine, um, which includes acupuncture and many other different modalities, um, I have a bit of an unusual background, particularly educational background, which most acupuncturists weren't fortunate enough to have. And my background basically um, is an apprenticeship. And in this day and age, apprenticeships generally aren't recognized, it's unfortunate. But back in the 90s, um, when I started my apprenticeship, um, about 1992, um, I was introduced to a gentleman who had a little dinky school called Anoche Institute. No idea what Anoche means. I really didn't even know that much about acupuncture or oriental medicine. But the school had about five students in it. And within a very, very short period of time, there was two students. And within an equally shorter time, there was one student, which um, was me. And so it ended up almost being an apprenticeship versus a school. And that was for quite a few years. Um, what I was taught um, was a very, very old medicine that the teacher that I had um, was taught through an apprenticeship with his teacher and he lived for a number of years with his teacher. Um, I didn't do that, and, um, but it was six days a week and um, for quite a few years. When I um, was able to leave, when I left the apprenticeship, um, I was asked to uh, teach um, at the acupuncture college here. And um, as a good martial artist, you always ask your teacher if, you're, if he will give you permission to teach. And he gave me permission to teach as long as whatever I taught was nothing that he told me. It had to be what I, was, um, what I learned through my apprenticeship. Because he told me, he said, um, I don't want to parrot on my shoulder. So I don't want you repeating what I've told you. You only teach what you truly know. Through that um, education and through which was also teaching, um, uh, I was able to become uh, an associate professor, um, a clinic director, and through that um, they had what was referred to as off-campus internships, which I created three of them. One um, was a seven-year one with um, the um, a domestic violence safe house in Albuquerque. Another seven year um, for students. Uh, it was a foster care for battered kids. And then the other one um, was at St. Vincent's Hospital, Christus St. Vincent's Hospital. And um, in the early, um, late 90s actually, um, I was one of a few people in the state of New Mexico that had full hospital privileges, which I still have. And I had a clinic there for students as well. And I still treat at the hospital. During that whole time, since 1993, I've, had, I've been in private practice uh, as well. Um, fascinating uh, and intriguing part of, quote, Anoche medicine or Kodotama Anoche medicine is the diagnostics. Um, most all acupuncturists use the same tools. Acupuncture needles, um, moxibustion, which is mugwort weed, cupping, which you saw in the Olympics, uh, different tools. But how we diagnose is a whole different ball game, and that's where it really differs. They ha um, we have um, uh, German techniques, uh, French techniques, Chinese techniques, Japanese, Vietnamese, South Korean techniques, Native American techniques, and all those techniques really, um, uh, they the difference between them has to do with the diagnosis. And with um, Kodotama Nochi medicine, the diagnosis um, is very energetic, very intuitive, has to do with intuition, inspiration, instinct, along with Western medical diagnostic practices. So not only um, would you be treated um, uh, for your symptoms, but why you have those symptoms. And so much of it is energetic. And so each one of these modalities um, has their own diagnostic system. We have um, in the state of New Mexico, actually throughout the United States as well, we have what's called traditional Chinese medicine. And so much of tra traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM, um, is based on the more modern um, diagnostic, uh, which is Western medical differential diagnosis. 
What I was taught is based on a very, very old system called meridian therapy, and it was called meridian therapy in the 1930s, but that's an English translation of something that's very, very old. And it has to do with the energetics of the body. So when I'm working with you, I'm also understanding your energetics and your energies through intuition, inspiration, your vibration is basically telling me what you want me to do for you. So I'm not here um, to tell you what you need to do. You're here to, to introduce me to you energetically, um, intellectually, so you can tell me what you would like for me to do for you. So we're more of a facilitator than actually um, like in Western medicine to where a Western medical practitioner will say, this is what's wrong with you because this is what I see and this is what the book says. Um, you would come to me and energetically, you're going to tell me why you have your headache, why you have your backache, why you have those things. So then I can treat the root and the symptom all at the same time. It works very well with allergies. Why do you have the allergy? I can take care of your allergy, but what we want to do is get to the root of why you have it. Is it psychological and physiological? Is it physiological and psychological? It could be both. But let's get to that root and see exactly what's going on. So every time you come in, we treat the root and the symptom. This is Kodatama Anochi medicine. This is this background of instinct and intuition. Um, when um, at the um, women's shelter, at the domestic violence shelter, I didn't say women because men were there as well. It's the largest in the United States is an 82 bed facility. You, there, there is nothing textbook with any patient that you'll have there. Each one is different. The only thing that you have as a diagnostic is your intuition, your compassion, your passion. And that's all that you really have to diagnose. And when you run up about, when you work with students with this, they're looking in their books and they're trying to figure out a way to treat these folks. You have compassion. You have nurturing. That's how you diagnose with, with folks. I had a, a, a clinic um, on San Juan Pueblo for quite a while for, the, uh, for mostly men that were challenged with um, substance abuse and that sort of thing. Same thing with them. They all had a different background. And there aren't any textbook points or textbooks ways of treating substance abuse. There just isn't. And so what is their, why did they get into it? What are their challenges? What are their weaknesses? What are their strengths? And every time you treat them, they have a different strength and a different weakness. The only thing you go by is vibration, energies, and how you sense that through your intuition. That to me is true, quote, oriental medicine. All of the other is great, and you can learn how to stick needles in people, and you can look up in a book and how to do it. That's fine, and that's wonderful. A lot of medical doctors are learning how to do it. A lot of uh, veterinary doctors and chiropractors are learning that. But that's a technique. So when you understand the, the vibration, you understand what intuition and inspiration is. When you understand that, and you may not quite get it, and it may take a lifetime, which is the idea behind it, it may take a lifetime to learn all of this, but, but through that lifetime, every inch of the way you're learning something new. You see something new. You recognize something new. And that means then that your, and this is what I was taught as well, every patient that you have is your teacher. So that way, there's deepest, deepest respect, particularly in the martial world, and I keep talking about that, but that's that kind of martial arts, that Asian philosophy of honor, respect, and courage, you, you will honor your teachers. Well, if your patient is your teacher, you must honor them. There is no, there's no judgment. You can't judge a patient for the way they're behaving. I've had people from, uh, from allergies to heroin addicts to, I used to um, work on the street with um, heroin addicts with, that in gangs. And there is no judgment because they're your teacher. How can you judge your teacher? You can't do that. So everyone that you treat 
You honor them because without them, you can't learn what you do. So in my family practice, which I've had since 93 or 94, it's a holistic family care practice. You work with children. You work with the adults. And in all the different dynamics within a family. And so um, why, why is your seven-year-old have allergies? Could it be stress? Could it be from an injury? Could it be these different things? So you work a full family um, dynamic within everything that you do with what you talk about. So we work with allergies. I work with um, pain, with substance abuse, with psychological challenges, a lot with post-traumatic stress challenges. People think of it as PS, um, PTSD. I don't think of it as a disorder. So to me, it's just a post-traumatic stress. And how you respond to that is not a disorder. It's a challenge. It's how, you re how you're responding to past challenges that you've had and you're bringing them full circle into, um, into your life right now and it's coming through as pain or whatever. Probably 98% of the people that come through that door that are adults that have some level of pain, if it wasn't an acute trauma, it was a post-traumatic stress response pain. And so we start looking at where did, this, where did this come from? And I start questioning and going back and going back, saying, well, all right, this happened when you were 10 years old and was in a car accident, and you haven't finished with that process yet. So we work through all of this. And um, so what happens then is that when you go to a Western medical doctor, they don't have the technique, they don't have the machinery to diagnose post-traumatic stress challenges. But um, a psychologist would, a hypnotherapist would, I would, because I look at people energetically. And so intuitively, you can go back and see, oh, okay, so how old were you when you fell off your tricycle? And how do you feel about that now? And what were your parents like? What was your brother and sister like? How did we work through all of this? And you start going back and it, it sparks something in people. And now you can get to the root of what's going on and have them be able to work with you, which basically they're working with themselves energetically. So this is kind of what I, I don't know whether my teacher would agree with this because what happens is, is that um, what you're taught through a teacher, you leave that tutorial and you create your own medicine from that baseline. But to me, this is what true energetic medicine is. So um, when we start um, thinking now in this country, we're getting better at it, but um, um, I've had people call me and cancel their appointment because they weren't feeling well. In the state of New Mexico, we're doctors of oriental medicine. We're primary care providers. That doesn't mean all the bells and whistles with primary cares. I'm not going to give you a flu shot. But regardless of what your condition is, call. We can talk about it because there are, um, along with Western medical science, there is um, um, a lot of different modalities that we can use. I, I do an awful lot of work with physical therapists. I do an awful lot of work with massage therapists. If they'll allow me, I will work with medical doctors, particularly in the hospital, and we can counsel on what's the best for the patient. So oriental medicine is not acupuncture. Oriental medicine is not only a philosophy, but it is a way of addressing challenges that people have physically or emotionally. And so when we look at this and we just kind of take this mm, um, taught type of thought process, and I've been at, uh, when, when we go out and, and people ask me what I do and I say I'm a physician and I'm a doctor of oriental medicine. Oh, that's right, you're an acupuncturist. No, yeah, but no. I'm a doctor of oriental medicine and I have a family practice and that family practice includes everything that can be challenging to a family. I do an awful lot of work talking with people about some of their psychological challenges, their stresses, because stress has an awful lot to do with your medical, um, physically and, and psychologically. If you're stressed all the time, it affects your immune system. Your immune system is affected, then you have allergies, you get cancers, you get all these different things. 
So we can talk about those things. Um, most all things in the East, martial art wise, whatever, is um, anchored by a philosophy. And that philosophy becomes part of what it is that you are. That philosophy, therefore, is part of my diagnostic process, how I live my life, how I um, look at other people and um, respond to um, the medicine and respond to different challenges that people have.